this caught my eye just recently. Women for election in Australia. One thing that we really do need, I think, in local government, but probably all forms of government, but I'm talking local government right now, is uh, more female councillors. There's nine councillors in the Midwestern Council. It's just one woman who's been there for a, some time now. Maybe it's time to change that. We've got local government elections coming up next year. Now, this uh, Women for Election in Australia organisation is nonpartisan. It's not for profit. It's uh, equipping women to run for public office in Australia. And the lady in charge uh, and the CEO of Women for Election Australia is Lysia Heath, who joins us right now. Good morning to you, Lysia. I think this is a terrific initiative, and we do need more women in local government. Oh, look, we certainly do. I'm, you know, I'm sad to say that of all the states, New South Wales is the worst state in terms of female representation on council. And... You know, we, we need to improve that drastically, and that's what we're setting out to do. I have a theory, and maybe it's wrong, but local government, you are so visible. You, you, people get in contact with you so easily. They run into you every day, and that can be intimidating and also almost claustrophobic. Is that, a, is that one of the concerns that women have, or, or is there a, a, a reason I don't understand that women don't get involved? Well, there's, there's more than one reason. I think the visibility can be part of it, but it's not, something we always say at our training events is think about what women do out in the community so frequently anyway, whether they're you know running a business or running a PNC or local sports or volunteering or you know fundraising via barbecues, very visible roles, you know, all very noble roles and and. Funnily enough, often doing kind of nine-tenths of what a, a counsellor would do anyway, which is being out in your community, looking after your community, um, you know, and trying to improve the status quo for your community. So many, many women are out being visible doing that already, but they're typically doing it pro bono. Yep. Uh, so... You know, I think we can turn that on its head, but there's other reasons as well. Yeah, well, they've got families and that sort of thing, but, you know, now we see, obviously, men taking a greater role in that. But I'm... Not, for instance, in the town that I'm living in here, in the district, uh, when I look up and down our main two streets here, I would, I would venture to say 80% of them are being run by women. I mean, yeah, right. they're, they're running, they're doing the business. And they're doing doing really, really well. And I think, gee, I'd love to tap into that that talent, that ability. Well, there's so much that you can achieve on on local council, and so many things that are um, important to women, important to everyone. But I think one of the the consequences, the sad consequences of our modern busy life, and um, you know, I don't think anyone would say that women don't share the <laughs> The majority of load at the moment, whether that be running that business, but then also staying on top of how the kids are doing at school or racing kids from school to daycare and all that kind of jazz. The consequence of that is that we have removed ourselves from a lot of the democratic processes and, and local government is one of those. So, you know, part of what we're doing and shortly we'll be announcing workshops that we're going to run across regional New South Wales is encouraging more women to get involved, to understand actually what happens on council, the positive impact you can have for your community. You get paid for that role. Um, and also how they can then pivot that into all sorts of other leadership skills as well. So they go to school. Basically, you're offering a, a schooling system so they're not intimidated by you know, the way business is done in council, points of order, you know, interjections, also the, the robust nature of uh, council meetings. I mean, they can be very, very robust. Well, yeah, you know, some people describe it as a bear pit, and, yeah. and that really... And that really depends on council to council, you know, government chamber to government chamber. Um, I guarantee one way to make it less of a bear pit is, is less bears, typically. But I think one thing, you know, if you get elected as a councillor, you're then sent off to council councillor school. So you're not thrown suddenly in the deep end. You, you get all sorts of resources uh, thrown at you to help you understand. And that training is ongoing as well. Lots of professional development you get if you're elected. But what we see at the moment is councils run uh, how-to-be-councillor workshops. 
Uh, and they're often focused on really your obligations if you are going to run. Uh, what we focus on is how you get elected. The A to Z of this is how you start, these are the dates you need to be aware of, this is how you get your messaging, um, what's important to you, let's focus on that. This is how you do fundraising if you need to do that. This is what election day would look like. We make what is currently a very opaque process transparent. What, what is the, when women do come to you and say, listen, I do want to become involved in government, and we're talking local government right now, what is the most asked question that you, that you would get uh, from women? Uh, how much money would I need? Yep. So that would be... That would so it's all about electioneering initially, isn't it? It's about how you get, you get the electioneering process going. Yeah, absolutely, because it is kept opaque. Um, you know, how, do I have to run for a major party? Do I have to go through a pre-selection? Can I do it as an independent? How does that change from one to the other? How to do deals um, with one another, you know, uh, you know, yeah. team up with two or three others to block whatever everybody else is doing, no matter whether it's good, bad or indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's lovely and personal, a lot of it, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, look... And we're not different, let me tell you. This is why we want more women in our chambers, isn't it? Yeah. You know, let's think about what they bring. They tend to be more collaborative, less adversarial, uh, they tend to be more visible, they'll take more meetings with their constituents, they're more likely to prosecute the case of their constituents back into the legislative chamber. Are you, are you going to come into the uh, Midwestern region? Is that, is that a plan? Is the state government or uh, you know, anybody getting behind you and as far as encouraging to come into areas like this and school oh, look, the young women and um, oh, you know, look, older women too, obviously? Oh, we, we, we're desperate to get out into regional and rural New South Wales. Uh, I expect around September is when we'll be able to, to announce specifics about where we'll be and when. So I'd encourage people to, to go to our Women for Election website. There's a newsletter that you can sign up for that you can get the jump on everyone in terms of learning when those events will be. But, you know, it's not about the metro regions. If you look at gender representation in the metro regions, it's a lot better. It's the rural and regional parts of New South Wales in particular that really need um, more women to be encouraged and they get encouraged when they know how the process works and then we'll equip them with the skills about how to get elected as well. Lucia Heath, uh, CEO of Women for Elections in Australia. Thank you very much, Lucia. Best of luck. I hope that we do get more women, particularly in local government. I think they've got a great story to tell. They, got, they bring a, a certain skill level. And having worked in an industry where uh, women have a, made a huge impact, I know what they're capable of. And uh, let me tell you, uh, man management, they kill the guys 10 times out of 10. Let me just about <laughs> They have skill levels that language. we can only dream of. But anyway, that's another story. Thanks for joining us. And um, look forward to you coming into the Midwestern region in the near future. I'll let you know when we are. Thank you very much. Lissia Heath, CEO of Women for Election in Australia.